So by now, you probably have heard about Photoshop's AI tool, Generative Fill, and it is pretty impressive. You can use this tool to change your background in your photos and in your videos, or even to extend your background. So welcome to another video. My name is Marisol. It's great to see you back here again. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for more content from me in the future. And if you're already subscribed, thank you again so much for being here again. In today's video, I wanted to show you how you can use this tool for product photography. And no matter whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned professional, this tool can be very useful for you in your workflow. So I can see this tool in Photoshop being very useful for business owners or people who sell products online. Let's say you wanted to populate your social channels with photos of your product, but you don't have the budget yet to hire a professional photographer. You're able to use this tool and get a bunch of different photos to populate your social channels just by changing the background or the scene that your product is in. And I'll be showing you later on in this video how you can do that, so keep on watching. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can create product photography using generative fill in Photoshop with photos that I've taken with just my phone and natural lighting, meaning lighting coming in from my window. And I also use a few examples of product photos that I've shot with a professional camera with studio lighting. There are some caveats in general fill and some cons, so keep on watching to see what those are. And don't worry, product photographers who still have a job. Well, at least for now. Taking over the human's world. So this has not made it into the regular version of Photoshop yet, so if you want to try it out and use it, you have to download the beta version. So you can do that by going to Creative Cloud, going to beta apps and Photoshop beta. And the version that I am in right now is Photoshop beta 25.0. So let's first start using an actual product photo that I shot with an actual set and actual studio lighting um, and see what Photoshop can do for us using general fill. So I have this photo here in Photoshop and I have already gone ahead and created some fills or some background changes, but I'll walk you through that process. So first of all, you can select the subject. You can click on select the subject and he has selected pretty much everything that I wanted, but I only want to select the bottle in this case. So uh, let me go ahead and select the quick selection tool and then just hold on option and just delete this cup from this selection. So once you have that selected, I want to invert the selection. So you can tap on this button right here to invert your selection. And what that's going to do is select everything but your can. Here you can click on generate fill and there are two options. You can just let Photoshop and let AI pick something, generate something and see what it comes up, comes up with. Or you can type via text prompts anything that you would like to generate. So let's just generate for, for fun. Let's see what Photoshop comes up with. And this is really, really quick. In about 10 seconds, Photoshop generated this new background. I'm unsure of what it is, but with just the first glance, it looks pretty, pretty good for something being generated in just 10 seconds. And here you'll see that there are three options that Photoshop has selected. There's one, two, and three. So let's go to the second option. It's not too bad. And then the third option, not bad either. So you can see that there are some flaws on this first one on the side with the label. So Photoshop didn't do a good job there, but we can go and clean it up. I also like here on the first one that it created a little bit of a shadow over here. And if I go and deselect that, the shadow is a little bit changed. And Photoshop went ahead and created a little bit more of the can here. So it wasn't exactly it but pretty good nonetheless. The second option that I did, I went ahead and I generated, I'll read you what I generated with this layer. So this is what I typed earlier. Object is on a table with ice cubes, coffee beans spread out in a nice and modern kitchen table with the window on the side with rays of sun shining through. So I was very specific with this. Uh, the more specific you are with AI tools like this one, usually the better results you tend to get. So let me enable this too, so you can see what this generated. Not too bad. Again, there are some imperfections over here, but I'm really liking what I see. This one is a little bit fake, looks kind of fake. This one is probably one of my favorite ones. 
I can go ahead further and clean up the stuff over here and over here. But for the most part, it's not bad. It created even a cup, of, a cup of coffee in the background that's blurred out. Let's go to number four, number five, number six. Pretty, I'm not sure what this is. Is that caramel or tofu? But anyways, it looks pretty good in my opinion. And you can go ahead once you have something selected and change things up in your scene if you wanted to, but I am not going to do that for now. I'm going to show you another example. The next prompt I tried was a beach setting with palm trees and heart lighting on product. So these are the ones that Photoshop generated. Again, not too bad, not too shabby. This one is actually pretty realistic. Number two, number two looks pretty nice actually. Number three. So what I would do if I were to do this again is I would probably try to get a clean shot of the product without showing the label here or this part of the label because it seems like Photoshop is getting confused when, with that part of the can. But for the most part, it did a great job. So let's try this other photo, a photo that I have taken. This is what I had generated earlier. This is what it generated. So first of all, I had enlarged the canvas size, so I wanted Photoshop to generate more stuff here to fill the canvas. It generated this stuff over here. You can see some of these kind of fall apart. It uses futuristic gadgets that are kind of sort of smushed over and Photoshop's trying to figure out what's futuristic. But you can always go ahead and toggle it and see what you like more. This one is pretty clean looking. It's not too bad actually. But the problem that I find specifically with this option, this is actually pretty nice. Well, except for these things up here. This one's actually not bad. What you could probably do is go ahead and select these, this thing over here or this and have Photoshop generate something else. But it even added some shadows on the side. The problem with this AI is that if your product doesn't fill the entire frame or if the product is not fully in focus, for example, my original photo, you can see that this part is in focus. And as you go through here, there's less parts of the image in focus. And that's because of that gradation in depth of field. And Photoshop tried really hard to keep this side of the keyboard out of focus and to regenerate it. But as you can see, it mushed out some stuff and it wasn't too bad, but for the most part, it looks kind of fake. It's not a very clean blur. And this is another problem with generative fill in Photoshop is that depth of field gradation is not there yet in terms of that. I also went ahead and took some photos just on my phone, just next to my window without much prep and we'll see what we can generate. So we have this photo of this juice, not sponsored, but let's select the subject. Pretty good. We have it right here. Let's invert it and let's generate something. Product is sitting on a cylindrical stand in a summer day vibe with sand and the ocean in the background. Let's generate and see what happens. Pretty good. I actually really dig this photo and what Photoshop did really well was this part of the product. It's a little bit more in the shadow. So it was able to fake that the light source is coming from this side of the product, creating a little bit of shadow on this side and therefore some shadow on the right side of this image. Really, really nice. Let's see the second option. Again, very, very nice. This one's a little questionable. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe a rotating stand. But for the most part, it did a really great job. Very impressed. And if you were selling this product, you were a startup, you could probably just save all of these three photos and post all of these photos on your social media channels or on your website. So I have this product now. So what I'll do with this first is I want this to be a landscape photo maybe something for a website banner, for example. So I'll go into canvas size and let's increase that width to 5,000, maybe a little bit more. Let's see, 5,300. All right, cool. So go ahead and select the subject. So invert this selection and now let's generate something. So grass fields with cows and other animals in the background on a nice sunny day with clouds comma vegan and let's see what happens i mean not too bad not my favorite 
like some of these cows are kind of weird. This is a little interesting, a little bit more cartoony. And this one's really weird. So maybe my prompt is not correct. So maybe I'll just say grass field fields on a sunny day with clouds and cows in the background. Let's generate again. So we got these generated. Not my favorite. So I have a feeling that animals don't do well with gender fill. Let's get rid of the cows. So much better. This is actually pretty nice. I can see this being sort of like a photo for the website or something like that or selling this product. So I'll just go ahead and edit this a little bit more, but it's a really great starting point, even with the photo I just took on my phone. This option number two is pretty good, except for this milk, since it's a vegan product. Number three, more of a cartoony version. I really like, again, the shadow that's been created on this side of the product because the original product had shadow on this side and it was brighter on this other side. So, so this is the power of Generate Fill in Photoshop. It's still in its early stages, but it already can create a lot of really powerful imaging. So if you're someone who wants to get into product photography and want to try things out or get like a mock-up going on before you go ahead and actually shoot something, this would be a good way to try to get inspiration of how you can shoot your actual product. That's the end of today's video. I have this other video on how to create very engaging captions to keep people watching your video with a free preset. So if you haven't watched that, link over here and I'll see you next time.